Could we prevent vision loss? These are foods that do not just one thing, but they do multiple things uh, to light up your life, including vision, including brain health, including heart health, including muscle function. For vision, one of the most profound clinical studies, biggest clinical studies on food and health was run about 20 years ago, started 20 years ago by the National Eye Institute. So this is sort of the, you know, for the National Institute of Health, like a very credible group of researchers wanted to find out, could we prevent vision loss, right? Very important in an aging population, right? Because, you know, people are working at an older age now, and if you can't see, it can't work. And so your productivity and quality of life go way down. And by the way, the other reason to protect vision has to do with the fact that our eyes allow us to be independent. As we get older, we all want to be independent. We want to do our own thing. And the problem is that if you can't see, you can't be independent. You can't even take your own medicines, right? And if you need, if you need them as an older person. So protecting vision was a big priority. So what was discovered is that there are dietary supplements that are made of the same things you can find in foods. Zeaxanthin, lutein, carotenoids, okay, and I'll come to the foods in a second, that when given to people in their 60s and 70s and 80s can dramatically reduce the risk of vision loss from macular degeneration. Amazing, right? So here's a dietary supplement that actually works. So there's so much hubris about the salesmanship of dietary supplements. If you, if you ever wanted to find one supplement to trust, it's the one that had the largest clinical trial to preserve your vision. It's called ARIDS, A-R-E-D-S. I don't get paid by any companies doing any of this stuff. I'm just telling you the facts, the data is really convincing. So ARIDS is recommended for people, uh, frankly, over the age of 50 to take once a day in order to be able to protect their vision. But here's the thing. The stuff in ARIDS is really, you know, some vitamins, there's lutein, there's zeaxanthin. These are these chemicals that I just mentioned, zeaxanthin and lutein. These are natural chemicals that mother late nature has laced into foods. What are some of the foods? Watercress, kale, broccoli, red bell peppers, persimmons, tomatoes. You get these same type of natural bioactives just from the foods that we can eat. So, you know, this whole idea of plant-based foods, which is a generalization, we can be more specific. Carrots, those actually contribute to uh, blood vessel health for your eye to, to lower the risk that you might have blood vessels going out of control. They tame the lion. And the other thing that they actually do is they also, because you're eating them, they go into the bloodstream, they also affect your brain. They also protect and tame circulation to ensure better brain circulation as well, better blood flow to the brain. One of the reasons I love pumpkins is that actually a great source of dietary fiber. A cup of pumpkin actually contains six to seven grams of dietary fiber. Uh, it's about a third of what, a fourth of what you would actually want for a whole day in a single cup. So think about all the things you could do with dietary fiber to improve your gut health, which lowers inflammation, improves uh, your immune system, and uh, activates your metabolism. But the other thing about diet, uh, pumpkins is that it contains zeaxanthin. These are bioactives that have been shown, they've been shown to be good for aging eyesight to prevent vision loss from age-related macular degeneration. So maybe you know somebody who's getting older who uh, wants to protect their vision, but also those are carotenoids that have been shown to improve your metabolism, improve your gut health, improve your immune system, and improve your circulation as well. So a lot of good reasons to actually pick a pumpkin. Now, here's the thing. Uh, when you're a kid, you buy a pumpkin, you carve it, and you uh, toss out the insides. What I'm telling you to do, because of all these good bioactives, is to look for a recipe to actually cook with the pumpkins. You can roast the seeds, all right? Um, uh, you can also take the flesh and make something delicious out of it. That's where the dietary fiber is. That's where the lutein and zeaxanthin is as well. So don't toss it out. Use it. All right. Now, foods are uh, really important because we can also protect the blood vessels directly. So there are foods that there's a substance in strawberries called elagic acid that we know um, actually can prevent abnormal blood vessels from growing. They're blood vessel tamers. And when you actually have elagic acid uh, from a strawberry, elagic acid is what makes strawberries tart. Okay. Um, and if you get organic strawberries, um, uh, they actually have higher levels 
And the reason is because the strawberry plant naturally makes elagic acid as a response to being nibbled on by bugs in the environment. So this is mother nature's wound healing response. So when you grow naturally, the strawberry is going to have more elagic acid. When you eat an organic strawberry grown naturally, you're going to get more of this blood vessel protective response. Recently, it's been shown by a group at University of Cincinnati that eating just one cup of ripe strawberries per day for six weeks. This is published in a research uh, uh, journal. Actually, uh, in, in middle-aged people who uh, had mild cognitive deficits, right? Not full-blown end-stage dementia, but mild. You know, like, where are my keys? So I'm sorry, what is that again? You know, the, the thing that you're starting to develop the symptoms. It actually improved memory, improved memory, strawberries, one cup against the placebo. It reduced the depression and frustration of not being able to remember things. Okay, um, and it actually improved the score, the cognitive executive functioning score, all because of the elagic acid and another bioactive we think called anthocyanin uh, as well. So again, you know, we're beginning to tease apart. Like I always tell people, uh, don't worry about the chemical names. Don't worry about remembering all the details. Like people like me who study food as medicine, and I write about this in my book. Let me do the heavy lifting for you. Let me tell you that what we're beginning to understand is that some specific plant-based foods are actually able to protect our blood vessel, protect our vision, and what's good for our eyes or good for our brain. So you get a twofer, a double-barreled approach to overall better quality of life and protected function. Now, here's another really cool research set. This is really, really new. It um, was pu published in the journal Nature Medicine. It was a study from the Cleveland Clinic, which is a major medical center. Remember, I told you all science-based, information that's rigorously done generating the evidence that you know you can trust because it's science this was a study of seven million people that's a big study they looked in the electronic medical records they looked for diseases that these people had of seven million people and they looked at the medicines they were having to see if there's any correlations was there any medicine that somebody was taking that might lower disease guess what they found they found there was one medicine that lowered the risk of alzheimer's disease by 67 percent Wow. In the study of 7 million people, no bias, just going in there and using a computer to figure out were there any medicines people were taking that lowered any disease? One medicine lowered the risk of Alzheimer's disease by 67%. What was that medicine? Guess what? Viagra for erectile dysfunction. People taking Viagra for erectile dysfunction had the lower risk of Alzheimer's disease by 67%. Holy cow. How would that work? Well, it turns out Viagra not only dilates the blood vessels in your genitals, okay? It also dilates the blood vessels in your brain, better circulation for your brain. And the way it dilates blood vessels, widens blood vessels, is through something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide stimulates stem cells to regenerate your um, organs. So not only do you have better blood flow in your brain, you also have more stem cells in your brain. Remember I told you about the Chinese celery and the stem cells that treat stroke? So now this is an interesting piece of research that asks what else could stimulate nitric oxide that might be able to stimulate stem cells, um, uh, widen blood vessels that might be able to do what we observe with Viagra. So this is actually an area of research I'm doing right now. Guess what? There's a food that will do that and I will tell you what it is. Beets. Beets actually will grow low to the ground and so does spinach, absorb a lot of nitrogen from the soil. And when you chew it, the but gut bacteria that starts in your tongue, tongue microbiome, converts the nitrogen from the soil in the beet into a form that when you swallow it, gets absorbed into your bloodstream as nitric oxide. Does something very similar to Viagra without genital effect, obviously. Um, but that's now a really interesting area of research to wonder whether or not beets, and by the way, if you don't like regular beets or can't find them, beet juice, look at this. It's, now this has been studied in humans and shown to also um, recruit stem cells and lower blood pressure. By the way, for every one point of blood pressure you lower with beet juice, you decrease the risk of stroke by 5%. So this is stuff that makes a difference. It's been studied in humans, quite amazing. One last thing I wanna talk about heart health and brain health is stress, chronic stress, which you know I've had as much as you guys, really puts an undue burden on our health. Uh, one thing it does, stress causes our adrenal glands, which sit on top of our kidneys to release a lot of cortisol 
Uh, it, it puts a demand on our heart. Our heart beats faster. It also changes our microbiome. It wricks our blood vessels, our circulation. It screws up our stem cells and it lowers our immunity. It causes us to be more inflamed. So how do we actually lower stress? Well, there are, it's not just food, it's lifestyle as well. So getting enough sleep, exercising lowers stress, being with friends and family safely, um, a family, by the way, that you like, uh, actually can lower stress. But I do want to tell you, share with you some interesting stuff. So um, uh, eating this can actually help you lower stress as well. This is a bar of chocolate. This is 86% chocolate. Anything over 80 will actually do it. It's cacao, dark chocolate. I'll tell you, uh, it's this is chocolate I helped to create with a friend of mine, Katrina Markov. Um, she has figured out somehow how to make really dark chocolate completely smooth, not bitter at all. And so it's with Vosges chocolate. Um, um, it's called a line of... So research have actually studied healthy volunteers who are stressed out. And they uh, measured their blood in their urine to look for stress markers. And what they did is they gave them dark chocolate, kind of like what I just showed you, um, dark chocolate to eat for a couple of weeks, two weeks. And they found that um, when they measured in the blood and in urine for people who they eat chocolate, the stress markers, eating chocolate lowered cortisol, um, lowered adrenaline, and lowered these stress markers um, uh, in their urine as well. And so high anxiety people can lower their stress markers by eating chocolate. Now what does chocolate do? It actually helps uh, also helps the gut bacteria, by the way, um, also uh, improves brain function, uh, and also really, really dark chocolate with cacao has fiber in it. So most people don't think about um, uh, chocolate, dark chocolate having fiber, but it actually does.